Sean, on Monday, uh, you mentioned, about, you were asked about the gap integrity issues against the run against the Rams, and you acknowledged that was, that was an issue uh, for your defense. How do you go about working on that uh, in, in terms of practice? How do you focus on that and repair that? Yeah, it's a time on task um, assignment, football type of type of mentality, Vic, and we just have to continue to shape our defense. We've got to continue to to make sure we're laying a good foundation. We do have some new pieces up front, um, and and so and that's not an excuse. It's just as we've looked at it and said, hey, making sure uh, everyone understands how this defense works uh, and how it's worked so well for a number of years. So, uh, like anything. Uh, you do kind of a needs assessment of uh, where we were really good and where we fell short, and that's one of the areas we fell short of. And, and just to follow up on another element, I guess, of, of some problems with the run, it looked like the Rams were focusing on a lot of – when you were in nickel, because they had the three receivers out there, those formations, they were running a lot from that. And obviously, I mean, that strategically makes sense uh, from an offensive standpoint, but defensively – I know you want to have an answer for that too. What what would you say in terms of how how that was a struggle, um, Teron Johnson especially? And I know he was trying to tough his way through. How how do you see that? Well, I mean, I think you know there's there's reasons for everything, and again, it starts with acknowledging where we where we didn't execute and and where we could have put at times them in better positions. And um, you know, we we played nickel um, against certain personnel groupings for for some time now. So, um, you know, there's, there's give and take to everything, but we've got a lot of confidence that so you mentioned Taryn. We've got a lot of confidence in Taryn uh, in the run and the pass game. And, and we know he's only going to continue to get better here. So um, without going too, too deep into the strategy piece of it, Vic, uh, we're definitely aware of that. Josh Jacobs, uh, uh, you, what, your, what are your impressions of him? Very impressed. Uh, very impressed. Um, great contact balance, uh, breaks tackles all over the, all over the place. Um, you know, to me, one of the better backs in the league at such a young age. Um, so tremendous respect for, for them as a team and for Josh in this case. Thank you. Sure. Hi, Sean. Good morning. Um, I got a couple things for you, if I could. First of all, Gabriel Davis, um, you know, I think we all knew that this kid was going to come in and be a good player for you, but three games into it, you've relied on him a lot, a lot of four wide sets, and he's apparently done a pretty good job. Could you give us a quick little assessment of just where the kid is, um, you know, in his first three games here? Well, I think he's done a good job. Um, you know, you turn the tape on, you watch him. He's productive in the past game. He blocks uh, when his number is called on the block, and I think that mindset alone is a, is a really good mindset for his future. Um, you know, <clears throat> in a lot of cases, <clears throat> excuse me, these – receivers that you draft, you know, aren't used to being uh, uh, or having that assignment to block. And, and that's an adjustment in their mindset. And he, he's wired the right way, right from the start. And uh, no job is too small for him. And, and uh, just as important, no job's too big. The game has not been too big for him. Uh, and, he's, and he's handled a lot of, uh, he's wore a lot of different hats, if you will, um, on, the, on the offensive side of the ball for us to this point. And Sean, if I could ask you, um, you know, we've seen what happened with the Titans now, but also this report out of Las Vegas that they had some guys um, at, a, at a function without masks. You're playing the Raiders this week. As an organization, how much of a concern is this going to Vegas with the potential that these guys might be on the field against you? Yeah, that, that news was unfortunate. Um, you know, what, I, what we try and do is control what we can control on our end. And uh, we've got a lot of respect for Coach Gruden and their organization, and I'm sure they're on top of it. Okay, thanks, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean, John Warrell with the AP. Hi, John. Um, looking at Brian Dable, and if you can reflect back three years ago when um, you brought him in, what was it specifically that you were uh, that, that that struck you by him uh, when you made that switch, and 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 what were you hoping to 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 see out of your offense? You know, looking back three years ago. Well, Brian and I have known each other for a number of years now, and I thought you know one of the cool pieces about uh, his background was having been around. Uh, a number of successful years in New England uh, in, in a similar way 
that mirrored my career in Philadelphia under Andy, um, you know, it's a great way to grow up, right, and cut your teeth around winning and the habits that go along and lead to winning. And, and then for him to be able to take his craft to the college level and, you know, really expand his, his awareness, if you will, of, of offensive football and, and some of the trends at that level, because we see some of those trends too, right? And um, I thought that was, uh, you know, another, another feather in his cap. When it comes to um, uh, continuity, I mean, he's been an offensive coordinator before. Um, what, maybe he didn't get – I mean, there are some circumstances there in Cleveland and, and, and other places um, other, other, than, other than New England. Um, what benefits have you seen in him having that three years – well, two – two seasons plus three games working with this offense and how it's developed? Well, I think, uh, I think it's all about development. You know, listen, there's, there's, uh, we're all, we're always growing. Uh, and that goes for coaches as well, right? Myself at the top of that list. Um, none of us are perfect. And we're, I think the cool piece about this staff is that everyone's open and, and we learn from each other and, and a lot. And I think that that bodes well. Um, where iron can sharpen iron and, uh, and we make each other better. And I've learned a lot from Brian and, and hopefully he's learned a couple of things from me. And I think it's made for a good relationship and, and, uh, and we're seeing uh, through three games, good results. I mean, there's a lot of football yet to be played and a lot of football yet to be coached. So, um, but I'm, I'm very pleased with where or how we've started the season offensively at this point. Last thing, is there an update on Josh Norman's status? Uh going into this week yeah I mean he'll be out of practice today um, um, no no change in terms of uh, his designation at this point thank you Sean sure. hey Sean John Scott uh, going back to the Titans thing how, how much are you using this as a learning and teaching experience in regards to how they're handling it as an organization just in case you may have to as well as a reminder to your team that while things have been steady uh, for, for a few weeks, any little thing could, could kind of take things off course. Yeah, I think awareness is the big, is the big key there with, um, you know, staying disciplined, staying, staying diligent in what we're doing, our habits that we, that we undertake inside the building and outside the building. <clears throat> and, and so, you know, it's a, we try and focus on the opponent this week, which is, which is the Raiders, obviously, but also being aware of what's going on around us in our world, not just the NFL, but in our world. And uh, there's, there's things like this popping up all over the place. And, and so, um, you know, we just got to, we have to be um, aware, I think, again, is the biggest thing. Um, sometimes we get insulated in this NFL piece and we lose sight of what's going on around us and, and, uh, so look, we're just we're gonna do the best we can, as I've said from the start, and uh, and try and remain disciplined through the season here. And uh, follow up here, uh, you guys as an organization <coughs> have a statement in regards to at least no fans for the foreseeable future. Uh, not having a seeming a, an open-ended timeline. Your thoughts on appearing to not at least have an advantage that a lot of teams around the league uh, are starting to get back. Yeah, again, uh, unfortunate news, uh, but again, we're focused on controlling what we can control. Um, and there's nothing more we would like than to have our fans uh, in our home stadium. Uh, but at this point, it doesn't look like uh, that's the case. And we respect the decision. Uh, we wish it weren't that way. Uh, but I, I think moving forward, we've got, again, focus on what we can focus on and control, and that's uh, getting ready for the Raiders this week. Thanks, Sean. Sure. Greetings, Coach McDermott. This is Leva Edwards from Raiders.com. Uh, my two questions would be, uh, I asked, I actually asked Coach Gruden earlier this week, what was the biggest uh, strength of the Bills? And he led it with saying that it was great coaching uh, upon your end. And so my two questions would be, first, what is your opinions and respect level that you have for John Gruden? And to kind of just reverse the question, what do you think is the biggest strength or the biggest threat that the Raiders oppose to the Buffalo Bills? Yeah, I mean, my respect for Coach Gruden is off the charts. Um, you know, I, I remember watching him years ago uh, in, in Philadelphia with the Eagles. I grew up in Philadelphia, and 
uh, actually worked at training camp one year and uh, he was the new offensive coordinator and, and uh, I mean, he was, he was ahead of the curve even back then. And, and I think, as you mentioned, the greatest strength that I think, uh, I think, I believe he is uh, when you, when you hire a coach and he's, he's on a 10 year contract and, and uh, you know, he's putting in place what he's put in place to this point. He and he and Mike Mayock as well. And I think they're, they're shaping a team um, to, to play well now, but also in the future. And he's been around. I mean, listen, I'm talking about Coach Gruden. He's won a Super Bowl. So, um, you know, what more could you ask for? Hey, Sean, I'm paraphrasing a little bit here because I don't remember the exact quote. But when we heard from Brandon earlier or in the offseason, he said yeah. that while you want to be able to throw the ball a lot if necessary, that you still want to control the game on the ground. You still want to establish the run. But with, with such a pass-heavy pass heavy attack these past few weeks, does that represent more of a, a change in offensive philosophy since the beginning of the offseason or just kind of rolling with? You say it again, Marcel. My bad, I think I muted myself by accident. I said, does that represent a change in offensive philosophy since that statement, or is this just kind of rolling with whatever seems to be working? No, I mean, I think it's 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 uh, us doing what we feel is necessary to, to win games um, week to week. So, um, you know, I'm not going to get into my philosophy on offense because I don't, I don't want to give away strategy. Um, so I'll just keep that in-house. Um, so... Um, you know, we're going to do whatever it is that we feel is necessary to win each week on offense, defense, and special teams. And uh, we hope it's, at the end of the day, the right plan. <laughs> sure. Go ahead, Sal. Oh, sorry, Coach. Um, first of all, if we could get an injury update on John Brown. And um, I don't, I'm trying to, and the two linebackers, obviously, uh, Matt Milano and Tremaine Edmonds. Yeah, John Brown uh, will not practice today. Um, that's all I know at this time as far as his status. Uh, and then Tremaine and Matt will both practice today. And, um, you know, you'll see him out there. Okay, and real quick, um, you guys uh, lead the league in 10 personnel, uh, a lot more than you have uh, in years past, but uh, even in the league. But just from your background and, you know, when you started coaching, you know, how much has that changed? And how much from a defensive standpoint does that put stress on a defense having to defend, you know, the whole field like that horizontally and vertically, basically. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it definitely does both of what you said, Sal, um, you know, so I, I, you know, listen, I think at the end of the day, regardless if you're playing 10 personnel, four wide, five wide, one wide, no wide, you got to execute at a high level. And, uh, and I think that's the key for us moving forward is there's times in the game where we could have executed at a higher level um, in all three phases, honestly, and, and that's what we have to work on this week.